Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another show of harmonics. Today, I'm going to be talking about a concert I went to 50 years ago. That's right, I was just a young kid. Just young, man, full of energy, wild, man. You know what I'm saying? I went to go see a band called the Rolling Stones on June 6th, and today is June 8th. I don't know really which one I went to, but, you know, I was partaking in other things that were illegal, but... I'm going to tell you the story of how it all developed to be at this concert at that moment in time to see the Rolling Stones and the opening act, Stevie Wonder. I'm getting goosebumps right now. It was an incredible show. But there's a lot of backstory. We'll talk about it. So it all started with my good friend, one of my best friends ever, the late, great Bill Edmonds. God, he was, he was such a big influence on my life. I miss him tremendously, but he was really the guy that actually, at that time, I was living with his wife, Nancy, and his sister-in-law, Bev. And it was just a great, great time in my life just to be hanging around because Billy was really a, a musical, a musical affectiano. And our, our favorite band was the Rolling Stones. So in May of 1972, tickets were being on sold at Montgomery Wars. But before that happened, we purchased, or I purchased it, and this is the original album of Exile on Main Street. They were getting ready to actually de debut that when they started their tour in June. They first went to Vancouver, then they came down to San Francisco. So this is it. This is the original copy of Exile on Main Street, and I had the opportunity actually to t see this at the EMP in Seattle years ago to actually see the original writing of all of this inside and everything. It is in perfect condition. This is the Rolling Stones. Absolutely an amazing album. I'm glad I have it, and it's in mint condition. So, I was telling you, there was a backstory. So, Bill and I wanted to get tickets. At that time, I can't tell you how much they cost, but I'm going to tell you in a second. At that time, the tickets were being sold at Montgomery Wards on East 14th in Oakland. So we went, and we were like really like the first couple people in line. It was kind of crazy. Next thing we knew, we were going up to the second floor because that's where Ticketron was. Well, we went and got that. We're standing in line. It's about 10 o'clock. And then we turned around, and we looked around like this, and there's all kinds of people in back of us, and there's about 10 people in front of us. And we said, hey, let's have a beer run. Man, that, piece, that place exploded. They could not stop us. We did not have no security bothered us. There was beer, there was wine, and there was, we were partaking in, you know what, that's legal today. We were smoking up a storm. Man, the music was going on, but it wasn't the Stones, it was... Montgomery Wars music. But man, the things were happening. And it was just a beautiful thing. We purchased our ticket. Bill and I purchased four. And they were only $5 a piece. Can you imagine seeing the Rolling Stones for $5? That's right. It was $5. So we were so excited. That was in May. And we talked about it. And we listened to the album on numerous times. And we were, you know, it was, it, it's just like, to be in that environment at that time. And I had to do this because I was thinking of Bill a while back and all the things that we grew up with. We went to kindergarten together. We went to junior high together. We went to high school together. You know, a musical influence on me and he's still a musical person that I still keep in my soul and in my spirit. Billy was great. Love you, Billy. Peace. So let's get to the what happens. So we jump in the car on either June 6th or June 8th. Today's June 8th, so I'm gonna say we're at June 8th, but I think we were at the first one, but I really don't know. But we went, and we went to Winterland on Steiner. Oh my goodness, when we got there, 
we were kind of good, we were in a good position in the line. We were right up against the Winterland Wall, hanging out with a bunch of people. It was just a great scene. Not too much security, but there was security. People, if you watch, you had, people had crossing blocks and things because it was an event. The Rolling Stones hadn't come to America after the fiasco at Altamont in 1969. And you know how that ended. So this was their first tour in three years coming back to America, but they're coming back to Winterland in San Francisco. Thank God for Bill Graham to get this going. So we were there and we were just partaking and eventually they were gonna open the doors and they did. When they opened the doors, I have witnesses, we were pulled up, Bev and I, I think Bill was in the back with Nancy, they pulled us up, I never touched the ground. We were just pushed, just pushed like in a mosh pit, just pushed all the way, all the way through the doors and everything. I didn't even give the person the ticket. I don't know where my ticket's at, because you got to realize, man, I'm only 55 years old. <laughs> Not really, but 50 years ago, you kind of lose some of the things, so I had to take a few little notes. But they, we came through the doors, and my feet, I was holding Bev, and, we, and my feet were off the ground. I never got to that point. Where we ended up was right in the middle of the stage, on stage left. If you're looking at the stage, you'd be seeing it as right. But the, the original thing, they're on stage left. Bill Wyman was on that side, okay? So it was interesting. He was right there. I mean, it's plain as day, but he had, we haven't got that. I'm getting ahead of my story a little bit. So people were partaking in that, man. It was just a beautiful thing going on. You know, the music's going, people are happy, everybody's getting a little bit drunk, we're drinking, we're drinking some Jack Daniels. I almost brought a Jack Daniels here today and salute Keith Richard, Bill Wyman, Charlie Watts, Eon Stewart, Nicky Hopkins, you know, Mick Jagger and Keith Richard, but I just couldn't do it because I work in a studio and you can't bring booze in, even though I want to drink booze, so I'll do an imaginary one. This is to all of you. Thank you so much. Anyhow. So, we're out there, and the next thing you know, the lights go down, Bill comes out, and he goes, please welcome to San Francisco, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder comes out with his aide, sits down, and the, he begins doing his new song, his new album, and it's great. He only played 25 minutes, but... What he did was, all of a sudden, it was bum 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 bum. He was doing, ain't that superstitious? Yeah, man, the place broke down. You looked over to the to the right of you, and you see all the way up into the balcony area. Man, people were dancing. You turn around, and you see how the seats were around. They were just, it was a boogie boogie time, boogie time, right? He was wonderful. To see Stevie Wonder this close, you know what I mean? We were like so close to him, it's like sitting across a table to a friend. That's how close we were to the stage. His show was done. Robert Shield actually opened the, the show before Stevie. He was the mime, and he was doing all, and that was, you know, when you're, when you're kind of like, mm, let me say, man, taking some kind of psychedelics, when you see Robert Shields play, doing the thing, man, and we're like, wow, you know, okay. It was all good. But you gotta realize, that's 50 years ago. Come on now. I'm just giving you the story. Don't try to, don't try to make me feel bad or anything like this. I'm just telling you the story of what's going on. So, we waited for almost an hour before the Stones came on. It was okay. It was great to do that, right? You're waiting for the Stones. They're getting ready to play their hits, and they're gonna play stuff from Exile on Main Street, which I consider one of the greatest albums of all time. The concert, the concert of them. So we turned around, and you gotta realize, there wasn't a lot of security back then, like it was today. I turned to my left, and here they come. Jagger, Keith Richard, Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman. Mick Taylor, all these, the Stones themselves are walking up to the stage. Let me tell you, let me tell you, they get up, they come up on stage. Bill Wyman's right in front of us, right in front of us. And he's banging, you know, they're getting ready. The crowd is just like roaring, roaring, you know, and it just, 
it's just amazing to actually understand what it is to see the Rolling Stones in the flesh. They are the greatest rock and roll band. They're still going at it. In my mind, this was the greatest concert I've ever seen, and I've seen hundreds of shows, but this one is number one. Paul McCartney comes in a close second, but there's Zeppelin, Van Halen, there's been so many great shows that I've seen in the San Francisco Bay Area. And anybody who's lived in this time, you see Peter Frampton with Humble Pie, you've seen Albert Collins, all of them, Chuck Berry, Miles Davis, all because of Bill Graham. What Bill Graham, we always, there should be a statue for Bill Graham and Jerry Pompili. But they were so great. And here they come on stage, and the place, it's deafening. People are screaming, you know, just, just like, like in 64, 65, when they came out, the British invasion. It was so loud, it was deafening. Well, what happens is Bill Wyman's right in front of us. Next thing I know, we're talking with Bill Wyman. And it was like, he goes, thanks, mate, thanks, guys. So friendly. And then they just busted into their set. They started out with brown sugar. They started, then they finished with bitch. Then they went rocks off, give me shelter. Happy, tumbling dice, love in vain, which I really like. I liked all the songs that they did in the set, but they did love in vain. And if you listen to their albums when they do love in vain from the 69 New York Madison Square Garden tour back in 69, it's a Robert Johnson cut. They sure they refined it a little bit, but that song's a great song, one of my favorites. You know, then they did, come on, come on down, sweet Virginia, you know what I mean? That just broke me down. And then all of a sudden they did a song that we all sing once in a while. You can't always get what you want. And you know what, in this life that we live in right now, you can't always get what you want. Houses are expensive. The world is going a little bit crazy, but today I'm just talking and celebrating about what's going on. And this, I'm bringing a little history back to you. They went down to one of my favorite songs, and I wish that we could still, we could do that song by Band Blue Voodoo, but we might, we might not. It's called All Down the Line. All down the line, oh shoot! Damn, it was great. Then they unwinded and they did a song that I know you all have seen Mick do. And they were great. They had Bobby Keys, you know, on, on saxophone, Nicky Hopkins, Ian Stewart. They did Midnight Rambler, which I consider one of the classic, classic extended songs that the Stones do do. They do that a lot, but they were just great. Jagger was in amazing. Keith Richard with his little blonde hair on the side, you know, that little... How you have that little tint, make it look good, man. He was great. You know, Keith looked, and he looked decadent, man. He didn't think, I don't think he had all his teeth yet or didn't have some. You know how Keith was, you know, he's all like that. Keith was just a bad character, had a little, you know, shark tooth and all that. They did Bye Bye Johnny. Then they did Rip That Joint. Did Jumpin' Jack Flash. Jumpin' Jack Flash is another great song. And they finished their set was Street Fighting Man. Street Fighting Man is still an anthem from the 60s, and it's probably still the same thing that's happening today in our own world. It's a significant song still, Street Fighting Man. Um, the Rolling Stones, in my opinion, have changed the dynamic. They're really one of the first to actually have huge concerts. If you really watch their longevity, from 63 to present day, or from 62, I should say. They're celebrating this year 60 years of being together with only, seriously, only three changes from their band. Three changes. Mick Taylor, who took the spot of Brian Jones, who was by himself great. Ronnie Wood, who took Mick Taylor's spot. Charlie Watt, who now is not with us anymore. Now we have Stephen Jordan. They are still a machine. They are still a band to be recognized. Recognized. They are still the best rock and roll band in the world, and they still do it. They said that a long time ago. Keith Richards said that a long time ago. 
If I, if I was, I'd be up in a, a small little blues club someplace. And they have done that. They have always gone to their roots. You gotta realize in 1965, they had the number one hit called Satisfaction. They wouldn't go on Shindig, not unless Hallen Wolf was the main artist, was the headliner. It was the first time in history of television that a black blues musician was the, was the main attraction. Howlin' Wolf, that's how much they respected the blues and how much they were, how much they have given back. Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, Willie Dixon, all of them. They still keep that in their soul. It's still there. So this show that I seen in 1972, Exile on Main Street, and it was called STP, Stone's Touring Party. And man, you know that would have a lot of debauchery going on, a lot of booze. We're gonna print, we're gonna send out three pictures that you can see that was taken by a great photographer named Jim Marsh Marshall, who was my friend. And we'll just do three that I have got from Jim, the late great Jim Marshall. So in closing, I think that everybody should listen to some of the Stones album. Listen to Exile on Main Street. I also like to dedicate all of this to all you Stone fans out there. And there's millions of you, millions. I like to also dedicate this segment that I'm doing to all the lovely people that I grew up with in Oakland, California, and that seen shows with me in concerts, because this is a time about being in love and respecting each other. I want to thank the late great Bill Edmonds for turning me on to so much music, and he's still spiritually in me. I want to thank Nancy and Bev for all what they did for me when I was a young punk kid. Man, it was great knowing them, and it was great. I want to thank Troy Fraternity and so many others. I can't name everybody. I can name Augie Carraway and Patty and all them. You know, my beautiful wife, Victoria. But the bottom line here is this concert in 1972 in San Francisco was the greatest concert I've ever seen in my life. It is number one because the Stones were so, I am right there in front of them and they were right there and they kicked ass. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting Harmonic all these years. We're in our 13th year. I'd like to thank my other Time Lords, Sue Joy Sakar, because without Sue Joy Sakar, I wouldn't be in front of you right now. Sue Joy Sakar is one of my best friends and we are called Time Lords because we freeze, we freeze time. God bless you all. God bless you to the Rolling Stones, to Charlie Watts, Brian, Brian Jones and all the other great musicians that I've watched all my life. Van Halen, you know, Aerosmith, you know, Albert Collins, B.B. B. King, Buddy Guy, Muddy Waters. Thank you. Thank you for all the support that you guys do for harmonics. Peace and love. Love you.